Good evening, my co-pilots. So we're here at the headquarters, and if you guys hear any background noise, I apologize. I have three dogs, so just bear with me, and we'll get through this. Um, before we kick this video off, I just want to clear up a lot of misconceptions about the R34 chassis, because there's a lot of people who don't know the differences between the trim. So the purpose of today is to clear some of those misconceptions up and to educate the people who don't know. And for my R34 gurus that are out there, if you guys are watching this, you guys know this is pretty much common sense. And um, if I miss anything, please feel free to comment below. Um, put your information out there as well, because I'm by no means an expert and um, I can learn from you guys. So that being said, let's get into it. So I got the idea for this video based on a recent Daily Driven Exotics video. Uh, coincidentally, 24 hours or maybe it was about maybe 48 hours after I released the video of um, why I didn't buy a GTR, they actually came out and um, one of the GTRs that they're looking at purchasing was one of the ones that I let go. It's funny how small the world is. The red GTR, uh, the one that was listed for 80, the one that I let go, that's the one that they're looking at picking up so it was just pretty funny that and seeing how small the world is and how cars can get around but uh reading through the comment section on that video I, I was shocked to see how many misconceptions are out there and um i decided to make this video to try to help some of those people understand the differences between uh the r34 and that when you put out r34 that doesn't automatically mean gtr there's quite a few different trims with uh, R34s. We have the HR34, we have the ER34, and we have the ENR34. And of course we have the Big Daddy BNR34, that's the GTR. So we're gonna go through all those different trims and talk about the differences and um, talk about which one might be best for you if you're in the market for an R34. So we are going to start with the HR34. The HR34 is available in a sedan only. The HR34, uh, the H in the serial number means 2000 cc. That's the engine size, which means that the HR34 only comes with a 2000 cc engine RB20. Uh, the RB20 non-turbo. There isn't an RB20 turbo available with the R34 chassis like there was for the R32. So whenever you see that in a serial number, you automatically know that that car is a RB20. Now, moving on, the ER34, this is another misconception. A lot of people believe that the ER34 is only available in a coupe. That's not true. It's available in a sedan as well. The ER34 code just means that it's a RB25. That's all it means. It can be non-turbo or it can be turbo. It can be either one. Uh, but just because it's a sedan doesn't mean that it's not an ER34. Um, I have an ER34 and a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, Ron, he has a uh, ER34 sedan as well. A, another good friend of mine, Marcus from Roads and Travel, he just bought a ER34 coupe. So all three of us have different R34 Skylines and all of them are ER34s. Now, the last one is basically the unicorn, in my opinion, below the BNR34. Um, and it should be just as desirable, in my opinion, as well, just due to the rarity and it be having even lower production numbers than the BNR34. And that is the ENR34. The ENR34 is basically just a non turbo GTR. That's it. Um, it comes with the Atessa ETS system and um, no turbos or anything like that. So if you see a listing for a non turbo R34 and you say, wow, that thing is expensive and it's more expensive than some of the R, the ER34s, excuse me, the ER34s that you're looking at, chances are it's probably an ENR34, but those are extremely rare, so I wouldn't really count on trying to pick one of those up if you're in the market for it. It's a good blank sheet of paper to try to build on because you do have that Atessa ETS, and um, those non-turbo Skylines with the Atessa are just extremely rare for some reason. Um, the V35 and V36 
as well Skylines the or the Infinity what is it called G thirty seven G G thirty five X are very hard to come by as you guys already know some of my Nissan enthusiasts already know that um the E in the serial number means twenty five. 2500 cc's which means rb25 um the n and the serial number means all wheel drive or a tesla ets that's why the gtrs have bnr or bcnr um in their serial numbers because it lets you know that it's in a tesla ets equipped model and of course the b means 2600 cc's which means rb26 so if you're looking at a serial code for a skyline and it says b and there's an n in there then you know that it's a rb26 all-wheel drive which equals gtr so the e and r34 e means rb25 n all-wheel drive a tesla ets and then r34 now Another large misconception that I want to clear up is a lot of people think that the R35 included, all of the GTRs are full-time all-wheel drive. That's not the case. In a nutshell, and I'm not going to go into too many details on how the system works, but in a nutshell, the way a Tesla ETS works is it's rear-wheel drive bias, which means that all the power is going to the rear wheels, but when the rear wheels slip, it can send up to... 50% of the power and torque to the front wheels to compensate and offset that rear uh, loss of traction to give you all wheel drive uh, temporarily to give you better traction to overcome that. So that's how a Tesla ETS works. It is not full time all wheel drive like the Evos and STIs and Audis and Lamborghinis and so on and so forth. Does a Tesla ETS make a difference? Um, I guess it could. It really depends on to the extent and how you build your car and what you want your car to do. For me personally, I buy my cars just to go fast. That's the only logic behind uh, my car choices is just going fast. Um, naturally, one would think that I would like all wheel drive cars, but I also have a lust for violence as we covered in one of the previous videos i like to be very involved in uh driving so i don't really think that it would make a difference depends on depending on the extent that you build your car because especially nowadays uh technology has advanced so much to the point where with a good tire you can chase down all-wheel drive cars all day long uh, even in my car, the massive Supra that has no business on a racetrack whatsoever. I've even got laughed at by local Japanese people at a racetrack for me bringing a humongous Supra out there. <laughs> and a lot of people that like I have the hood pop and I was like, oh, it's too much. You know, but even as massive as that car is, I've chased down uh, DC2 ITRs. I've chased down Evos, I've chased down GTRs, I've chased down all kinds of different cars that I had no business keeping up with and that you would think would lose me in the corners just based on the amount of traction that they have to my less amount of traction in the rear. But with tires, a good set of tires, nope, I've chased them down easily. I forced an Integra Type R to spin out under pressure in front of me at Nico once. And I uh, actually came in second to a gutted s14 with an upcoming pro driver it was a kid driving and he was only about like 15 or 16 years old so i really think that all-wheel drive makes a huge difference once you get past a certain threshold of a car build that's just in my opinion so wrapping this up if you're in the market for an r34 and you can't afford to be an r34 try your luck at trying to find an e in r34 if you really want that a Tesla ETS and want to get it as close as possible to a GTR. I know it sounds very fanboyish to say that, but I see so many people saying that they wish that they could afford a R34 GTR and there's other alternatives out there that um, we talked about in this video and previous videos and uh, things like that. There are ways to absolutely obtain your dream car. So, um, I don't really buy out of nostalgia and I'm not a purist so I have no shame in going and getting a base model 
R34 model and uh, building it up to the standard of beating the top trims of the same family as well as other cars that it has no business being in the ring with that are above its weight class. I really, really like stuff like that. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I choose to time attack a Supra because some of the looks that you get out there with people with the smaller and lighter cars and you're out there in this massive land yacht beating them it's just it's a feeling indescribable <laughs> but that's a that's a topic for another day we're not going to get into that into this video so um with all that being said uh we're gonna go over some of the exterior differences as well because there's a lot of misconceptions about the exterior of the gtr and the er and the enr 34 all right, guys, so we're going to get into the exterior differences now. There were a couple of examples at the shop, ERs and BNRs when I was there. So I went over a couple of examples to help people. But guys, please, please, please do me a huge favor on this video. I cannot stress this enough. Please like this video and share as much as possible. I'm trying to shine light on this particular subject because there's so many people out there who say that the r34 is their dream car and they're working so hard towards one and now because of the market of 2020 and how it is with base model cars being a minimum of 115 grand it's just unobtainable now and it's not it's that's just not the case so the more people who know about this the more it can help them obtain their dream car and that's all i want to achieve by Putting this information out there to educate these people into showing them that hey you can obtain your dream car it's not exactly 100 percent authentic but you can either make it into that or you can build on it and you don't have to be scared to drive it because it's a cheaper variant so please please like this video and share it as much as possible to help some of these people so with that being said let's get into it okay so this is a bnr 34 um there's a couple of differences here as compared to the ER. The biggest one you'll notice is the front bumper here. On the ER34s, it only comes up to about like where that line is. Now we're not gonna get too close to this car because this is somebody's car, it's very expensive and we wanna keep it respectful. So we're not gonna get too close to it, but I'll point out a lot of the differences on the exterior. So yeah, like I was saying, it only comes up to about where this line is and then the hood comes down the rest of the way like so right here prime example so it only it comes down to here and the bumper only comes up to about here i don't like the urus kits because it retains this it still comes up to here and then there's a small piece that goes right here and then it's the hood and i just don't like how it looks um but i mean to each their own i like very simple and it gives it a, a clean uh look of simplicity when it's all one piece that's why if you get GTR parts, you have to be extra careful uh, front bumper wise. You have to make sure you get the hood too because it won't work with a GTR bumper in the GTT or ER34 hood. I also hear that the hood latch on the BNRs is different, but I'm not exactly sure. Maybe somebody down in the comments is a Nissan guru and they can school me on that, but I'm not exactly sure. But I know for a fact like the hoods won't work as you just saw. Another big difference is these fenders. The fenders are a lot wider than on the ERs, as you can tell here. Still not sure if you can tell here, but they're just not as wide on the ER34. Which is why on my car, we're going with the wider Z-Tune style fenders. I could get the OEM uh, metal fenders, but I just like the aggressive look of the Z-Tune. And I know it sounds very cliche, repetitive, and everybody does it, so on and so forth and everything. But we're going to go for as much aggression as we can with the body. Because if we decide to go wingless, we don't want it to be too understated. But we do want to be underneath the radar. So... We're gonna go with those z-tune fenders another difference is the quarter panel here it's a whole lot wider than the er's the bnr 34 gtr this is a performance trim on top 
of a economy car base which is why a lot of things are um, like puzzle pieces certain things will fit into certain places very very easily uh, the interiors are nearly identical and I'll show you that here in a minute we're not going to get inside because as I was saying this is somebody's car but I'll show you guys from the outside um, a lot of the materials are the same and so on and so forth but um, that's one of the biggest advantages that ER34s have uh, if you have one of those and you're looking to do a GTR conversion is that um, since it's just a step up in performance trim and still the same car base um, you're easily able to convert things so the ERs of course come with these regular brakes whereas the BNRs come with the Brembos and of course there's a huge difference there the BNR 34 of course is vastly superior to its other trims of the ENR and the um, ER turbo but for me personally I don't know I just don't see the performance um, out measuring the car to the point where it should be one-fourth of the cost but that but other than that headlights are the same tail light bulbs are the same Yep, still got the xenons. This might be a Koki because it has the black housings and the xenon lights. The xenon lights are of the later models. So this might be a, what, 2000 or something like that? But I'm not exactly sure. Uh, another difference is here in the rear for the GTRs. Skyline is kind of indented in there and it blends in with the body color whereas on the ER34s it's kind of embroidered and it says Skyline in chrome so the GTRs looks a lot more understated and a lot better in my opinion. Good lord that was expensive. It was almost 20 bucks for the toll today. I might as well have driven a Supra. It would be the same exact price. Really want to get you guys feedback. What do you guys think? Is the price difference between the R34 Turbo and the GTR worth it to you? Especially nowadays in time with the astronomical market, even a non V spec base model GTR will still run you 115 to 120 all day long. The days of non six figure GTRs are gone. They're completely gone. They sunk all the way down to like. 36 grand a long time ago back in 2013 I think it was and then they started creeping back up as they became legal to go into Canada and now as they're getting ready to become legal to go into the states all of them are creeping up even non-GTR variants so those days are long gone and I just want to know if you guys think that it's worth the extra cost because you can buy the turbo for a fraction like one-fourth of the cost and does the performance benefits for the GTR outweigh it that much to the point that the extra cost is worth it. In my opinion, I say no, just based on my previous experience with GTRs, but that's just me. Uh, you guys let me know what you think down below.